Sadly, I'm not going to be competing in ABC this year as I'm obligated to be judging another event, although I know many of you are looking forward to the combat bots. And if I was going to compete, I'd probably go in with a cardboard box because why not? You may want something a little more robust, so I've got Jamie Lieben here back with us to talk about some design tips, specifically around a wedge bot, and he's brought one with us today. So welcome, Jamie. And first of all, why a wedge bot? What are the advantages? Well, a wedge bot is simple, first of all, which helps you stand or wait, which is always a challenge with a combat robot. You don't have to worry about powering an active weapon also. Uh, the idea behind a wedge is that you have the front end of it that's supposed to get under the other robot, lift them up, cause them to lose traction, and push them into a wall or other obstacles in the arena to cause damage. So what makes for a good wedge design? Well, first of all, an angled front that stays down on the ground. Uh, a uh, wheels that are placed for good traction, and then the bot needs to be designed so that it can take punishment uh, and damage from arena weapons running into walls or running into the other bot. So what happens if you get flipped by, say, another wedge or a flipper? Do you have any defenses against that? Sure. Uh, if you, it's a good idea to think about where you're going to place the wheels on it. If you place the wheels so that uh, if you make the bot thin enough and place wheels toward the back, even if it gets flipped over, it can still drive around upside down. In a robot combat match, if you can't move, you get counted out. Even if you're upside down, you can still move around and possibly push them the other bot around, stay in the competition. Right, so your wedge isn't really useful at that point, but at least you're moving and, hey, with another bump, you might get flipped again and you can use your wedge. So any design tips for making it out of plastic then? Sure. So first of all, think about where you want it to be tough. Uh, do you want to put all of the weight and damage absorption on the front and plan on keeping it pointed toward the enemy? Or do you want to make it thicker all the way around? Uh, placing the wheels toward the back so that the weight of the electronics in the middle weights down the nose and gives the tires traction is a good idea. And um, make it as compact as possible also. The uh, electronics and the size of the motors will kind of determine how big it needs to be at a minimum. Uh, the bigger you make it, the more chance you have of being overweight. Got it, so you mentioned the electronics and for me, I just kind of shoved them into a box. What are your tips for securing them into your robot? So the best thing I'd suggest is servo tape for RC cars, uh, which is a double-sided tape that's got some give to it, uh, some shock absorption. Uh, you could also use hot glue or duct tape. Yeah, holds the universe together, of course. So I noticed on this one, you have a cover that you can remove. Any tips for where you place the cover and how you design it? Because I know that you need to get in to make repairs, build your electronics, and what have you. Yeah, you'll notice the cover for this uh, covers the whole bot and uh, you want to have a big cover so you can get access to your parts to make repairs or make changes. Uh, I'll usually put the cover on top because you won't face a lot of smash or hammer bots in a one pound class, first of all, and second of all, it's a convenient spot to have it. Uh, to secure them, I'd suggest uh, designing in holes in the top cover and then holes in the edge of the chassis. You can see I've added some cylinders here that have holes that are slightly undersized, and I'll use some machine screws through that to secure it. If you have the space and weight, make these posts a little bigger and the holes a little bigger so that they'll accommodate uh, heat set inserts, hmm. which are a threaded, uh, knurled brass insert that gets heated up and pressed into place with a soldering iron, which is kind of cool to do anyway. And then you have a nice secure thread for the machine screw to thread into that's not going to strip out. Got it. And so any other tips for somebody before they enter the arena? Practice, practice, practice. Don't get your bot done so late that you don't get a chance to drive it around, especially if you're not a really experienced RC pilot. You'll also learn that you may have design problems with that bot. Uh, getting it done early, not at the last second, lets you practice with it if it's good, and turn up design flaws if you have them. I have an early design of a lifter bot that I designed here that had a servo here, and I designed it, drove it around, and uh, made a little practice target to First drive all, against. Sorry to interrupt, yep. what's his name? This was an early design that uh, 
was originally printed in teal and had a green flipper and one of my boys looked at it and said, hey, that looks like Perry. That was before I added the eyes, so of course I had to put the eyes on uh, to make it look like the Phineas and Ferb character. But the problem with this design is that the pivot for the, uh, the lifter is right here. And uh, another tip, uh, get yourself a little practice dummy. Uh, I used a uh, small flat rate box from the Postal Service and loaded it up with random nuts and bolts until it was one pound. And I'd drive against this and try and lift it up. Well, with this design, when it would get under that weight, it would go like this. <laughs> the wrong bot. <laughs> lift in the wrong bot. So the lesson there is I did that early enough to realize this wasn't a good design. I went through a couple of other designs and ended up just totally revising it. And that's how I ended up with No Step on Snake. Great which, name, by the way. Yep. Yeah, it has the uh, big lifter way in the back uh, with the leverage here to lift up the other bot. Is this just the basic like high-tech servo? Or what are you using over here? Yep, yeah, that's a high-tech Metal Gear servo, which Spark, Gear. Yep, okay. which Spark Fun has. Nice, good deal. Well. Are you able to share some of these design files? What do you have for us? We sure do. Uh, the model that we created here, this is a 60% scale model, uh, is available on Thingiverse, and it fits those parts that you featured in the earlier video uh, with arcade drive with the uh, Pro Mini and the motor driver that SparkFun carries. Good, so where can people find this? Thingiverse.com, do a search for Plastic Ant, SparkFun, Combat Robots, you'll find it. Sweet, and we'll make sure to include a link below. Also, we'll see you October 14th and 15th. Thank you so much for joining us, Jamie. Good luck and happy hacking.